Avi Yemeni is a reporter for what is described, and I think accurately, as a right-wing um, news organisation called Rebel News, which has got branches around the world and one in Australia. And Avi Yemeni, if you've been listening to the platform for the last week, is a guy who was going to come here on behalf of Rebel News to cover the Brian Tamaki rally protest at Parliament but was denied entry by New Zealand immigration officials when he tried to board a Qantas flight in Australia on the grounds that he was of bad character. It has since emerged, despite denials, uh, despite denials, that the denial of entry to New Zealand for Avi Yemeni on character grounds was somewhat curious. He didn't simply pop up in a computer anywhere, Interpol New Zealand, which is basically the New Zealand police, went looking for reasons to deny Avi Yemeni uh, entry to New Zealand. Just why, we don't know exactly. But they went proactively looking for a reason to keep Avi Yemeni out of New Zealand. And plenty of people will tell you online that he's had a summary conviction for domestic violence, which netted him a fine of $3,600. He has previously been denied entry to the United States because of some sort of furore with uh, a, a comedian called uh, Jim Jeffries, and that some people don't like him. Um, and he would not be alone in the world of having some people who don't like him or don't agree with him. Uh, but does appear, after trying to poo-poo a memo leaked to another right-wing blog site, the BFD, um, this memo from police, in fact, is genuine. So genuine, in fact, that the New Zealand police have launched a mole hunt to find out who leaked this memo, showing that police were directly intervening in Avi Yemeni's case or entry to New Zealand. Police have apparently launched some sort of a witch hunt to find the leaker. That story was written by our friend David Fisher at The Herald. Um... But funnily enough, David Fisher has not written a story. The Herald hasn't written a story. No mainstream media have written a story saying it is concerning in New Zealand that we have a police force that proactively targets individuals based apparently on their political views or where they might sit on a political spectrum. So what happens next in the story? Well, part of that, I guess, will be up to Avi Yemeni himself. And he joins us on the line uh, from Australia right now. Avi, uh, good morning to you. Thanks for getting up early. How are you going? Uh, good morning, Sean. And, yeah, good on you for sticking with this story um, because I think it's important. I think it's important for New Zealanders, even if you don't like me today. That's, that's me. That's my political views. But if you allow that to fester and continue, well... It might end up being a government and a policy and a political worldview that, that, that you suddenly, that you become the enemy and you're the one banned um, just like that with Interpol yeah. looking and searching and finding. And I think everybody, everybody can have, you know, there's something that um, if they search, there's something often that they, they'll be able to find that they can, they can use because this is not, this wasn't actually legitimate grounds. Even after they searched, what they found isn't legitimate grounds. It just made a good headline that um, they thought would be easy to to run with. And they were right on, uh, you know, in, most of the mainstream media have run with that. In yeah. fact, all New Zealand media have run with that. And even when they got caught out, they've still, uh, David Fisher from the New Zealand Herald has still justified it, which is mind boggling. Yeah, well, not really, not really, though. Hopefully he's getting some correspondence this morning, putting him right on that. Avi, look, the other thing that has been raised, and you know me, I'm going to ask you questions that you may not like, but that's how I roll. People have suggested to me that you set up basically a begging page or a grifting page asking for money for your court case for being, you know, refused entry to New Zealand the day before you actually were refused entry to New Zealand. Is that so? <laughs> I love the conspiracies online. These are the same people, by the way, who were also until uh, it was confirmed by the New, by the New Zealand Herald by the police that the, that the email was fake because the yeah. uh, the email address was fake. Listen, um, most media companies, as you know, Sean, we um, try to prepare things for multiple outcomes. Um, where it's, this is not the first radio. This is not the first time. This is not the first time we've uh, had something like this and an outcome to expect 
that there was potentially a chance we would get pulled up. I'm so you're telling me you did we... set up the donations no, 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 page no, no, before no. you were turned away at the border? No, no. So firstly, I, I, not, it's not me. We have a Canadian team. So if you look at the timestamps, you might be looking at Canada's time. Um, but did we set up the page preparing for um, two outcomes, one getting in and one not getting in? Yes, before I got to the thing. But it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't prepared for the outcome that we'd that actually played out. I was not expecting to get to Qantas um, uh, to, to the Qantas check-in. Now, the reason why we even prepared it for, for the outcome of um, not getting in was after reading the New Zealand Herald. The same reason we hired a, a lawyer before even going to the airport. I wouldn't have hired a lawyer if I didn't, if I hadn't have read. So New given Zealand all Herald, that, Harvey, I'm sorry, mate. Why didn't you fill out or ask for a character waiver if you knew this was coming down the pike at you anyway? Uh, because we got the advice that told us there was no need for it. There was a, there well, that's was a, bad that's, advice. That, you know, that's pretty that's bad pretty advice given the context in which you were operating. Uh, well, yeah, uh, sure. No, or I'm, did you uh, want you to, come on, Harvey, be honest with me. Did you want Sean, to have this conflict? Did you want it to play out like this? No, no, no. We want to get it. Sean, if you, can you show me this waiver that you keep talking about? Show me the waiver. There is no you waiver. You apply. Either, if you think you're going you to get bounced bounce back on character grounds, you can apply for a waiver. You can say, here's why no, I am no. of good character. And you would have read the website. It says the onus of proof in that circumstance is on you as the applicant. No, so that's that's not really how it works. So you either so you either have to apply for a visa or you don't. The visa waiver is part. Okay. The the, the character yep. waiver. Li, listen, a second, short. The, the visa, the character waiver is part of the v, of of a visa, right? So you either accept that as an Australian, you don't need a visa. visa so you're right. part of the yep. visa waiver program, or you need to do uh, you need to do a proper visa, which takes about four weeks, right? Which we did after the fact. Yeah. But the advice that we'd been given, so we called the lawyer after we'd seen the New Zealand Herald and we told him everything openly, this is what we have, these are the... Uh, and he yeah. goes, no, you don't need on those grounds, you do not meet the threshold of needing... Yeah, and I can a, see a, a why you would one. think that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, fair so, enough. So, 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 no, we don't look for a fight. You know, I'm, I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to say to you, honestly, Sean, does it hurt us, like, in the, in the short term? It did in the long term. Well, the, it, it, these things often backfire, and this is why yeah, they get so I'd upset agree. on the other side because this stuff backfires. Because now, what's going to happen when I finally get into New Zealand? People know my name. Before, I was nobody in New Zealand. I was going to come <laughs> to do my reports for the rest of the world. This time, I'm going to come, and there are a lot of people yeah. interested in what. Um, well, Arby, what, what it's we're funny. I was then. saying on this show earlier this morning, I had no idea until I watched our state television channel last night who Andrew Tate was. And then I saw yeah. a whole lot of people <laughs> losing their minds and suddenly, I, you know, we figure out who Andrew Tate is, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, Arby, so where are we at now? Where are you at legally? And also, can I ask you, why does a huge multinational news organisation like Rebel News need to beg money off for illegal action off its uh, subscribers or listeners? So, firstly, Rebel News is 100% viewer funded. We yeah. don't have any advertising. The advertising is like tiny uh, we have yeah. like private advertisers nowadays but we are 100 percent fuel funded and um for those who, for those who actually follow my work they'll know uh, firstly we've got to cover the cost of of the work and then on top of that we're in court a lot because yes we do have a lot of um you know we, we are stopped a lot um from tr people trying to stop us doing what we do and unlike the mainstream media. We don't have deep pockets. We rely 100% on our supporters to fund us through that work. Um, and an example so people understand, this stuff is not cheap. There's one case that I ran uh, uh, just to get into press conferences here in Victoria. Yeah. Um, that was that, that cost us for three days almost $300,000. So the, 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 the legal fund that you're talking about, that, that kind of pays for all these kind of battles, including the one where we forced police to apologise for arresting me three times unlawfully for doing my job. That stuff allows me... So now I can go do my job and police will never do that again. And same will be in New Zealand. Same will be in New Zealand. They'll see that we will stand up and fight and, and, and defend our position and ensure that I can travel freely. 
it won't happen again in New Zealand. Um, but if we don't have that and if we don't crowdfund it and we, and we fight back, then I wouldn't be able to go back to New Zealand because there'll be no pushback. Yeah. Be, the, the, Arby, so where is your legal team out at? What is your next move? So there's, we're, we're working a few avenues. So firstly, we're, we, we filled out also the, that visa as well. So they, they promised that, uh, you know, you should have felt that you should fill out a visa. So we're doing that. And we're also, uh, we're waiting on advice. <laughs> New Zealand, we don't, this is the first time we're working with barristers in New Zealand. So they've been a bit slower than I'd, I'm used to. Um, we're just waiting to figure out w- what we can file, whether it's a judicial review or whether it's something else, um, with regards to that refusal. Uh, there's usually a few options. I can't jump to any conclusion because I don't know New Zealand law. Um, that was supposed to come in by Friday. It hasn't come in yet. So I'm assuming and hoping it'll come in today and I'll have a better idea. And I'll let you know uh, first, Sean, but we are waiting also for the uh, for Immigration New Zealand to um, come up with their, their decision now on what what you're referring to as that, that character waiver, which is part of of a visa and what you don't understand sean with that one the reason why you wouldn't as an australian just jump to that is because as an australian you can usually just pass the border yeah. freely now the minute you the minute you you sign up to these visas so you, so if you if you they're saying you do meet the threshold if you're agreeing with that um then yeah. then there's no free pass into new zealand every time you want to come you've probably got to plan at least a few weeks before so you can mm. you can get a visa and uh, so it's a process and it's an unfair process when you don't meet the threshold and so, i think it's an I've unfair got, uh, process when an individual like you whether i agree with you or not rv because the herald publishes something or there's an online campaign absolutely. against you you get identified as somehow politically undesirable and i and i look at what the police have done here and it is hard to come to any other conclusion. And I would note that um, police and uh, immigration have refused to be interviewed on these matters. Somewhere, I'm presuming, your name is on a list of undesirable people. And, like, I wonder, Avi, if, say, Greta Thunberg was going to come here, would she meet the character test? Because she's pretty extreme. She wants to destroy agricultural production all over the world. She's She's very rude to grown-ups, you know. But that's the point here. Is right now she's fine because her political worldview matches the, that of the, the the ruling class in New Zealand. But let's say that that changes. Let's say that there's a really angry uh, uh, flip in New Zealand, and it turns out being uh, a, a an extreme right wing uh, leadership. Let's just say for argument's sake, and she does become the enemy. Then you're you're giving it a green light to stop people like yeah. Greta from coming in. So if you're okay with that. Um, you're actually supporting that, and I think um, that that's why that's why we have to continue fighting. and And I appreciate everyone's support on this one, and uh, just know that we we will. And and, and those are the different avenues we Is are. Is anyone else around the world on. interested in this story, or are we being self obsessive Kiwis here? Um, no, it, it's it's interesting because I have had from a few big um, outlets some some private notes at this stage, but I think people kind of because uh, it is New Zealand and Australia, we are the bottom of the world. There, they want to see how it's going to play out, I guess. Um, but a lot of it falls on your shoulders, Sean. So it's up to you to keep <laughs> the, the establishment accountable. Um, and you did well. I think it's important now. You remember last week, if it, the last two press conferences with Jacinda. Firstly, she in, in, two weeks ago she argued that when she was asked by... I don't immigration know, alone, Manager, wasn't it? It was immigration, their decision alone. Yeah, well, two weeks ago, yeah, but two weeks ago she was also saying when they put the question to her, do you have a problem with people travelling from overseas? And obviously they were referring to us uh, to, cut, to attend these protests. And she looked at them like, how dare you even question whether we're going to stop people... Uh, mo- yeah. people's movements to, to, to join a, a democratic protest and it's just about being peaceful. So even if you make the argument that I was there to join the protest and not to report on it, according to Jacinda Ardern, that was fine. So now it's like, what changed? Did she know about it? And then the next week you asked her and she couldn't verify anything. Both those things have changed, Sean. So yeah. it's both been verified and it shows that no, people were not free to move. There was a, a, a list, and I, I, I'd argue, I don't think I am on any international list. I think literally, as you described before, the New Zealand Herald created a, a story through as much dirt as possible and hoping something would stick. 
and something for them stuck enough that uh, there was a next headline the next day that suited their their narrative and um that that's why we are we we are going to follow the steps so i am going to do the application and 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 you know put new zealand immigration through that as well where they have to judge our character uh, waiver yeah. and, and and look at it but even if we get that through i still want to fight them in the courts because i don't want to have to go through that process the process every time there's a story in new zealand i want to follow up as an australian i want to be able to just come across and follow a story so we're going to i have to work both avenues at the same time but i promise your, your listeners that uh, I don't know if in your studio you have guests, but one day when oh I yeah no there, no we got room uh, we got room for you we got a seat here. I'll be coming in um, and uh, and I like it. You do you, you you're not afraid to ask the tough questions even of me, and I don't think we politically uh, agree on on many things. I, I'm sure that we would uh, would we wouldn't agree, wouldn't see eye to eye. But uh, the, the important thing is to be able to have that conversation and, yep. and 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 talk it out. If you if you're willing to have the conversation, um, then. We're all better for it. Yeah. Hey, Arby, thank you once again for coming on and talking with us. I am off to the Prime Minister's press conference this afternoon, but I have a suspicion that that is going to get swamped with a change to some of our COVID restrictions announcement today. Um, just warning you, but I am going to try and ask the Prime Minister uh, for some comment on the admission from police that you were, for whatever reasons, targeted and they went fishing for bad information uh, about you or negative information about you. Have a great day, Arvi. Once again, thanks for joining thanks, us. Mate. Cheers. Arvi Yemeni, um, controversial, controversial rebel um, news reporter, and he is a rebel news reporter. He's called a reporter. He's employed by Rebel News. There you go, David Fisher, whether you like that or not. And just a reminder, too, if you want to talk to David Fisher, david.fisher at nzherald.co.nz. CC us in. Hello at the platform Kiwi. Just tell us what you think of his journalism, really. And he seems to be the guy who was behind getting RV banned in the first place. I wonder if David's got particular political views or not. I'm thinking he has. I'm thinking he has.